Next two guests are the most popular and influential movie critics around these days. Their syndicated show is seen all over the country every week called Siskel and Ebert at the Movies. Would you welcome Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert. Good to see you again, guys. Nice to be here. All right. How are you? Good. I haven't seen any movies this summer at all, so whatever you tell me. I'm well, ready. we've seen everything, so what would you like to know about? No. We haven't seen uh, the new Superman movie. They're not screening it. What do you Opens mean? Opens tomorrow. Warner Brothers isn't screening it for critics. Why do, why do know, movie theaters do that? This is a very, very bad sign. Why is that? Uh, basically, I think because they don't want to review until they get that first weekend. They Thinking don't everybody goes on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, spends their money, then on Monday they read that it's not a good you movie. You mean to tell me if, 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 <laughs> if the movie company doesn't think it's that good a movie, they get it into the theaters before you guys get a whack at it? I would say that basically there's no recorded instance in history of a distributor that thought they had a good movie and decided not to show it to the critics. I see. So you think that's the reason? Well, I don't know, Gene. What do you think? I think that's the reason. I think and you know that's the what's reason, unfortunate yeah. is no, I, I don't think they <laughs> often know what's a good movie and what's not a good movie, so therefore they're not even giving the movie a chance because we might say in Friday's paper, it's a good movie. There have been cases where we've really gone to bat and really asked for a movie to be yeah. shown to us, and then we've seen it and we've liked it, even though maybe the distributor didn't like it. Okay, that's interesting. I, I don't know, know if that's that. going to be the case this time I know around. television shows have done that before. They get a show on the air and don't yeah. preview it to the critics. Yeah. You know, I was noticing that George... Uh, no, I was no reference to George at all. No, I didn't mean... That's what I'm taking. That was, no, that no, was... Uh, that I noticed not. that George didn't even bring along a clip from his show. <laughs> Well, did he have a clip the last, when it. you were on the last time, did you bring a clip along that people could see? Uh, actually not. Good question. Next time I will. Because maybe we're making a mistake, Gene. Yeah, I well, think you guys are going to do something did, a little yes. bit different tonight. A little different. We had, see, just when George decided it wasn't the best idea, we kind of thought it might be because right. we've been on the show several times. And we've never had an opportunity to really show you a clip from our show. We're not sure that you're up late enough to watch it, you know, so we thought you might be interested. You have a clip of your show. Oh, yeah, you next week's show. Want to take a look? Sure. All right, watch the monitor. So, this friend of mine, he talked to this friend of his that he knows. And this friend of his, he knows a friend who talked to another friend to talk to somebody connected with you. I think your mother? That's talk show host Johnny Carson making his 1964 feature film debut in Looking for Love, co-starring Connie Francis. And that is... One of the movies we'll be looking at this week. I'm Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times. And I'm Gene Siskel of the Chicago Tribune. Johnny Carson is widely acknowledged as a master of show business. But based on looking for love, that business doesn't include the movies. In looking for love, Connie Francis plays a woman who goes on the Carson show to promote her latest invention, an oversized coat hanger called the Ladies' Valet. They were really funny, Roger, back in 1964. Carson is given the difficult assignment of playing himself. He is not equal to the challenge. Here is an example of his fabled interviewing skill. See, this, this crazy thing you have here that looks like a, a blind date for a Martian. Uh, <laughs> tell me about this, will you? And here he uses some subtle facial expressions. <laughs> and here. Look how he holds the audience in the palm of his hand. I'm cute. But outside of that, nothing. <laughs> you know something? I'd kind of like to hear outside of that nothing. How about you? It doesn't look a bit, does it, like they were paid to clap. What a lively audience he attracted back then. I guess you're in trouble as an actor when you can't play yourself. Johnny Carson would only make one more movie, the appropriately named Cancel My Reservation. So you're voting thumbs down on this movie? Uh, Roger, ten fingers I down. I don't think so, because first of all, I think you're totally wrong about Johnny Carson. He could play himself, and it's obvious that he was playing himself. I mean, when you look at that performance, it makes you think of Johnny Carson. Looks just like Johnny Carson does today. Let's put it this way, Roger. If that were the way Johnny Carson really was, I don't think he would have lasted 25 years. But it was the way he really was, and he has lasted more than 25 years. And here's another thing. He's not just playing that scene by himself. He's in there with Connie Francis. Now, we're talking acting here. And for somebody whose background was only in television at that time, game show, to be able to hold his own and to hold the screen against that Connie Francis performance that's acting. Roger, I drive one question. Okay. Did either Johnny Carson or Ed McMahon give you a million dollars on TV recently? Yeah, and I also got a house and a boat and three weeks in Tahiti. How'd you do? Good <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Looking for love. You know, the last... <laughs> true, true. The last time we were on the show, you mentioned that you had I made that movie, and somehow it didn't ring a bell with uh, either Gene or myself, so we went back and uh, took a look at it. Yeah. It's not on video, by the way, Johnny. Uh, no kidding. No. <laughs> 
why you look so nervous there, so uncomfortable. Why'd you do such a bad job? I'll tell you why. You <laughs> explain you, yourself. Now, Gene, that was supposed to be a joke. Now, you're being very hard on you guys. You guys were cruel. I'm a professional critic. I'll tell you why <laughs> I did it. that. Okay. You know that scene took a, a whole day to do that? Did you have that much trouble getting your lines right? No, it just went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And uh, at that time, I think I've been doing The Tonight Show about a year or something, and somebody okay. says, I think it was Joe, late Joe Pasternak, says, I'll give you $20,000 to come on and do that. Mm -hmm. Sounded good, right? That sounded good at that time. <laughs> That's why I did that. But what, you yeah, guys, how did you get that from the Turner? Turner Broadcasting owns that picture. Yes, uh, they right. do. They own the rights to it, and uh, they... Uh, I think they're probably going to re-release it now. Yes, Johnny Carson's of, first movie. Oh, right? I think they're going to take, take the color out and make it black and white instead. Just re <laughs> <laughs> well, let me do this. You guys are cruel, and you'll pay for this sooner or later. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> this is not an upcoming show. This was a little... Uh, it actually wasn't put on, yes. Specialty stuff. Yeah. Well done, anyway. I haven't seen that for a long time, and now I know why. <laughs> okay, you guys disabused violently on one picture. Full Metal Jacket. Well, we actually, that was an interesting show, because Gene really tried to catch me in a contradiction. I had given a positive review on that show to yeah. Benji the Hunted. And Wonderful the, title, I might yes, add. Sir. Benji the Hunted, you know, sounds like... Uh, uh, an ex you would think Benji were a machine or something. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Arnold the Hunter. Benji no. the Hunter might ben have been a better title. Maybe Benji's even a Benji the Puppy dog. would have been a good title. Yeah. Or Benji the Cute Puppy. Right. But I voted thumbs down on Stanley Kubrick's Full Metal Jacket, which was a great, uh, ambitious, expensive, major war epic because right. I didn't feel that it worked and I voted thumbs up on Benji the Hunted. And Gene felt that this was a contradiction because he felt that Benji the Hunted was not as good a movie as Full Metal Jacket. Yes, in fact, at the end, I trapped Roger into saying, now, come on, Gene, you know that Full Metal Jacket is ten times the movie. Yeah, but you see, the, the problem is, see, this is kind of complicated, is Full Metal Jacket is aiming up here right. and didn't make it, and Benji is aiming down here, sort of, and did make it, so to speak. So you're rewarding, see, a, film for, you're rewarding a film, if I get it right, you're <laughs> yeah. rewarding a, fil a film for aiming low and hitting it, rather than missing aiming high. See, we were cut off at our show just when I was put, moving my hands around to try to explain this to you. See? In other words, what you'd like to say to children, people is... Children who are... Now, first of all, nobody your age is going to go see Benji the Hunted unless you're paid to do it, right? It's a kid's movie. It's not a good film. Well, but for children it is. I say it isn't. I think it was very interesting with that little dog chasing... By the, the way, the film... Cougar, the poor little cougar... Oh, I've never seen that before. And Marlon it feeds Perkins them and it guards them, and for four days it protects them from the Marlon wolf Perkins and from the eagle, and Marlon, it only eats a raspberry the whole Marlon time. Marlon Perkins did it better for 25 years on uh, Wild Kingdom. But see, the point is, when a kid goes to a movie, he's looking for a little trained dog and something like that. And to that degree, he, you see... To the degree the, the that better film, a better film. To the degree that you expect a Benji movie, you get one, and to the degree that you expect a great Kubrick movie and Full Metal Jacket, you don't get one. I'm being serious and not joking. The I'm Kubrick film. Enough, the, I'm being serious too. Now look, when we did Looking for Love, we aimed low and we hit it. <laughs> you see, we knew where we you were going. Loved you would have loved that better. picture. So you didn't see the whole picture, did you? Uh, which picture is that? Looking for Love, the one... Why would we... Actually, no, we only saw... Because uh, that scene was very powerful in context <laughs> with the rest of the picture. <laughs> to take something out of context and show a little... And then lose well, the whole you, dramatic... You, know, you, know, you had a lot of other scenes in the movie. Many, many more scenes. <laughs> How many more? Uh, well, there, 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 there was this one. No. One, no. One. <laughs> Tell us about Cancel My Reservation. Did I do... Did I, I, did that was your second film. Yeah. <laughs> what, what the hell was that? <laughs> Bob Hope. Oh, my God, yes, I did a, a little cameo Sorry, in the Bob Hope picture. Johnny. We don't have time for that. Thank God you don't have that one. We'll be right back. One of the things we're going to talk about tonight, we'll do it next time. Oh, it'll be fine. We'll come back on and call, uh, talk about some of the summer movies, and also you guys had some uh, views about the video home cassette stuff that you want to talk about. Mm -hmm. We'll touch on it next time. time. Yeah, this was so thanks for being here, and your films. thanks for treating my picture with such reverence. Our pleasure. Uh, George, we're not making any more. Yeah. <laughs> George, you are going to be opening in Houston in a play called Hence Forward. Hence Forward. In October. In October. Thank you for the plug. Well, you're welcome. Thank you. Will you come back and tell us about it? Well, I'd be delighted. Thank well, we'd be delighted to have you. Uh, <laughs> tomorrow, 